Hello everybody, this is Point on Pally back again with another video. And this time we're gonna I'm gonna do things a little bit differently. Instead of just a normal tutorial uh, that I've come up with, um, what I'm gonna do is actually recommend somebody else's setup that um, they've created. I've made some tweaks to the setup since then, but I do want to give the full credit to this setup. Um, and we'll, I'll get into all that. So this is a new RFL setup that uh, I've been testing out and working with since um, the concept of it was posted about a few months ago by uh, a technical artist named Perry Legton. I apologize if I messed the name up. Um, but he had come up with this uh, new method. It's, it's kind of a variation on an older method, but it's a new method where um, you work with a point on curve info node and a nearest point on curve node to uh, essentially keep the foot constantly having contact with the ground. So as I move the control around, you see that the foot is always lining up with the edge here. And I've gotten some really good results with this. Um, it also works if you want to just do a foot roll, you know, heel to toe. It also works with banking side to side. Uh, it's a really, really solid setup. Um, now, in his setup, uh, which I will post the link for in the description of this video to kind of point you towards that, because I do want him to get the credit for this, because it's, it's really great. Uh, in his setup, he used a rotation control, and I've set it up using a translate control just because I liked that idea a little bit better. Um, that way you kind of have limits to how much the control can move and things like that. Uh, just uh, At least for me, it makes a little bit more sense. It makes it a little bit more animator friendly. Um, but... Um, I'll go into. I'll do a brief description of how it's set up, just so if you're curious, um, you can kind of set it up yourself. But yeah, um, it's it's a translate control that uh, moves the position of the of a joint that's going to rotate up, um, and it rotates on a different axis depending on which you know area of the foot, whether it's front to back or side to side. Um, there, I also have a control to adjust. So it's kind of like a multiplier for how much it lifts up on either side. And I also have this auto ball lift control, which essentially um, it accounts for the ball joint also being lifted. So if you wanted to do a regular foot roll, you now have the option to. Um, but it also works, you know, within the control as well. Um, and then there is also a, a, I call it a POC twist. It's point on curve twist. So the foot essentially twists from the point of where it lifts. If you also want to twist the foot uh, without lifting it, you can do that too. You just have to turn the multiplier off. Um, and then there's just a mid twist to twist from the middle of the foot. Um, so that's kind of the nuts and bolts of this setup. Um, and if you're curious, it does work with scaling. So if you do scale the rig up, this does work as well. It also works if you've moved the foot around. Um, if the computer will work with me here. Yeah, so if you do move the leg around, it still does work. The only instance where it doesn't work is if you start to rotate the foot around, then that kind of throws uh, this setup off. But you really normally, especially in like something like a walk cycle, you're not really lifting the foot up or you're not rotating the foot, so to speak. Um, you would keep the foot flat and then to kind of lift the foot either forward or back in sort of a walk cycle manner, you would just move this control back and forth. Um, it will essentially give you the same effect. So uh, the setup for this, let me go 
into the setup here. I'll turn this on so you can see it. So this setup is working. The primary setup here is it's based off of two curves. So the first curve is this one. And you can see this curve is roughly the shape of the bottom edge of the, of the foot. Um, I, what I did is I created a nerve circle and moved the points so that it sh the shape of the circle you know, resembled the bottom edge loop of the foot here. I used a 12 CV nerve circle for that. Um, and attached to this circle is this locator using a point on curve info node. Um, but um, it's not only a point on curve info node, if I go into the node editor here, let me show you what I'm working with. Um, so here is the point on curve info node. Now, um, this is the curve that we're using for the point on curve info node, but you notice for the parameter, we have this nearest point on curve node. Um, if you're not familiar with this, this, this node is actually pretty cool. What it does is it, it's pretty much does exactly how it sounds. Um, you have an in position here, essentially like a world position of X, Y, and Z and a curve. And what it does is it, you can return a either position, either X, Y, Z or a parameter value. And that you can plug into the parameter of the point on curve info node. So this is, this is a pretty helpful one. Um, but uh, the reason you'll notice we're using this circle here for the nearest point on curve. The reason for that is um, if we're going based off of this control here, if I move this a little bit forward, well, just based solely on position, the nearest point on cur on the, this curve would be you know still to the side, and I want it to be a little bit more forward. Well, that's why we use this circle here. This circle allows us to have um, in its even distribution of this control, essentially. So if I move the control, it's moving in that direction. And so that direction of this curve, or so the nearest point on this curve, will then translate to the parameter of this curve. Now, a key point here, uh, the, the curve used for the circle here and the curve you use for the, uh, you know, the foot at the, uh, to mimic the edge of the foot, they have to have the same number of CVs, obviously. Um, uh, so that, you know, when you move close to, uh, to this parameter over here, the parameter on this curve is going to match. So just keep that in mind if you do intend to use this setup. Um, and then those, uh, this point on curve info node is driven into the locator. Um, and oh, before I do that, let me point out this decompose matrix node. Um, so if you're unfamiliar with this node, what it essentially does is it take it, what, all it's really doing is essentially getting you the world position of an object. So for the nearest point on curve node, we're using the circle, but the object that we're trying to determine nearest point on curve is this locator up here. So essentially, if this locator moves in any direction, what's the nearest point on this circle here? Um, but what we do is we get the world space position, essentially, because we uh, plug the world matrix into the input matrix of this node and what it does is essentially converts it into, um, you can do it based on rotation scale, uh, you know, other stuff, but the one we're using here is the output translate. So we'll plug that into the in position of this nearest point on curve. So that's what this is for. This is a very handy node. It's almost kind of like a point constraint too, if you want to do it that way. Um, you can essentially 
if you plug in the world matrix of one object here and the output translate to another object, it will essentially snap that object right to it. So it is it does function a lot like a point constraint. I've seen this also used for IKF, FK switches and things like that. So this is a really handy node. Um, so going back to this, uh, we get the point on curve info node going into the locator here. And then this locator is going into this plus minus average. And if I graph this out, you'll see what's going on here. So I have another decomposed matrix here. And what this is essentially doing, because what I want here is if I look at this joint system here, because this is what this is all going into, I have a four joint system here. I have the base joint, which is the center of the circle. And then this joint is where the point on curve info node is, is going to go into. But the important thing is I want the values to reflect um, the local translates. So essentially, I want the position here, but I want the values based on um, the, the base joint uh, the base joint here minus the world values to get the proper local translates here. So if I go up one, there we go. So these are reflected based on the, the base joint here. Um, and so what this plus minus average doing is, is it's taking the point on curve info node because you see the translates are different than the joint itself. Um, so I take the locator oops, and I plug that into the plus minus average and using uh, setting the operation to subtract, what I subtracted by is the decomposed matrix of the world space of this base joint. And that will actually get me the proper local translates of this joint. And that's what plugs into these this what I call POC twist joint. Um, and the reason this is I call it the POC twist joint is this is the joint that twists based on that point on curve point here. Um, you can see by that rotate Y right there. And that's pretty much it as far as the um, getting the point on curve. And then um, if we go beyond that, you see I have this multiply divide here and this flips the values by the negative which uh, I apply into this final joint here. So I have the, the point of POC twist joint here. This goes into the lift joint which is going to have the rotation values here uh, for lifting the joint whether it's in rotate X or Z. And then the center joint here is essentially the negative translate values based on this position. So this joint returns straight to the center of the foot. And this is what's actually going to control the position of the foot. So if I lift this control here, or let's bring it back something like that. So you see the position is still in the center of the foot of this joint, but its rotation is reflected based on the lifting joint right here. So that's the overall setup for the foot here. Um, I've plugged this in to kind of an existing RFL setup that was already here. Um, if I can find that real quick. So I, this is the old RFL setup that I had in here and I literally just created a pad in here and just parent constrained it to that center joint that was already here. So you can actually add this into an existing RFL setup if you wanted to, but all you would really need for an R, um, to keep from the old RFL setup is the toe and the ball joint so that you can still get the lifting of the ball joint and you know the IK handles for the base foot here are it, you know can be constrained to something but so this has been a very very helpful setup um, for an RFL. I've really enjoyed this setup. I've, um, I've gotten some great results out of this. Um, it's been very, very helpful um, in getting that all contact 
because this has been something that has always eluded me for many years. Um, and I want, again, big thank you to Perry Lichton for coming up with this method. Um, I'm, I intend to use this for pretty much every rig I have from here on out. Um, I've enjoyed it that much. Um, so, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Um, again, I'll post the link for his original blog post in the description. I didn't want to do a full tutorial because I didn't want to, you know, it is his setup. Uh, he, it, the core concept is his, so I didn't want to step on his toes or anything. But I did want to like point you in his direction. Um, so I really hope you enjoy this setup as much as I did. Um, thanks for watching.